Extreme sports require extreme protection, and unless your gear has a huge amount of restrictive padding, the shock absorption can be limited. But a company in Croydon believe they have come up with a solution. I've come to D3O to meet chemist Ken Kendall. So Ken, what's so special about this foam then? If you want to give it a go, it's nice and soft and squidgy, you can push yeah. on it and you can see it's malleable, it's lovely and flexible. However, if you want to hit it, yeah, yeah. there you go. It's just like hitting a piece of wood really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. It very, very quickly toughens up just instantly, you'll see now it's nice and flexible hmm. again. The reason the foam can do this is because of a key ingredient, orange goo. This is actually the raw material that we use in, in all of our products. If you move it slowly, it behaves like a, quite a viscous fluid. Like quite sort a viscous of treacly, liquid. isn't it? Yeah. But then, Ken does something shocking. If you care to put your hand on the okay. desk... And... Are you sure? <laughs> I can't feel a thing. But how can a material be soft and flexible one minute and then rock hard the next? Oh, that's clever. Let me show you. The orange goo belongs to a peculiar group of substances with bizarre properties called non-Newtonian fluids. Quicksand is another one, as is this stuff. And this is corn flour mixed with water. And if I take my hand and very gently push it in like this, it runs through my hands like a liquid. This is because its particles are able to flow smoothly past each other. But if you apply sudden force like this, it stops behaving like a liquid and starts to behave like a solid. The particles don't have time to flow out of the way, and so instead they lock in position. The orange goo is essentially an artificial version of the corn flour mixture. But just how tough is the goo-based foam? I'm going to use this test rig to drop a 2.6 kilogram bowling ball onto this ceramic tile. That's going to produce 26 joules of energy. So to protect the tile, I've got a piece of standard foam here, the sort you might get in like shin pads. Away you go. When the ball drops on the standard foam, it bounces half a metre in the air and the tile beneath is completely smashed. And now, to use our non-Newtonian foam. Exactly the same thickness, though. This time, the bowling ball hardly bounces at all. Its energy is completely absorbed by the foam, and the tile remains intact. When the ball lands on the non-Newtonian foam, all the molecules lock together and that stiffens the foam, absorbs the energy and protects the tile that's underneath. And the brilliant thing about the non-Newtonian foam is that it goes back to being all soft and pliable. Ceramic tiles are one thing, but how well can the foam protect the human body? This is why I'm kitted out in a non-Newtonian super suit. And I want the people of Croydon to do their worst. Come on. I'm trying. Come on, harder. Really? <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> Did it hurt you? No, not at all. All right, one more down. Come on. One more. <laughs> I've got nothing left. <laughs> As well as protective suits like this one for sports and stunts, other non-Newtonian fluids are being used in trainers and even bulletproof jackets for soldiers. You know, are you doing anything? <laughs> and while it doesn't make you invincible, it's probably the closest I'll ever get. 